so great to be here. This is the first webcast of Dr. Love Dials You In. I know you've been watching Ask Dr. Love for 55 episodes. We're still going to have that, but it won't be video. It'll just be audio. We're going to transform you to the webcast. And this is the first in a series of 10 webcasts on Dr. Love Dials You In. Now, my mission and my goal in life is health literacy and to bring Qigong into the world. And the way I have been doing this for 22 years is through what we call the five transformations. And I teach it five different ways. And my older students get really annoyed because I keep changing the words and changing the words and changing the description because I'm trying to refine it down to its essence so that you really get it. So here's the five transformations. Who you eat and how you think. Now, what, what do you mean, who do I eat? Do you eat cows? Do you eat chickens? Do you eat goats? Do you eat pigs? Do you eat eggs? Do you eat fish eggs? Do you eat octopus? What, who do you eat? Now, a Buddhist is one who believes that life is sacred. And there's something that we talk about, sentient beings. So why would you eat a sentient being unless your life was on the line? I mean, there are cannibals. Do they eat other people for fun or do they eat them for food? Okay. The point is, who do you eat? Are you eating carrots? Are you eating kale? Are you eating collard greens? Or are you eating sentient beings? How do you think? Were you taught critical thinking skills in the public school system? Were you taught critical thinking skills in college? Were you taught critical thinking skills by your father or your mother, your church, your government, your school? Probably not. How do you breathe? And what do you drink? Now, you can go 40 days without food. You can go 14 days without water, but you can only go four minutes without air. So the single most important question you have is how do I keep breathing? And what is the function of the breath? And what muscle is involved in breathing? And do I ever think about breathing just <gasps> And there's people on CPAP machines because they stop breathing at night. So all these things are going to be addressed over the next 10 episodes. When do you sex and when do you sleep? Now, I'm aware that some people are uncomfortable talking about sex, but sex is the way that you got here. And if you want to reproduce yourself, you're going to have sex. So wouldn't you want to learn how to do it in a sacred way? Because if you believe in God, and if you believe that God created you, then the way she, he, they did it was through your mother and father. So the very act of creation is sacred. You're taught creation is sacred. But the process that created you is not sacred. I think it is sacred, but totally up to you. You've got to figure that out. Now, sleep. 50% of Americans don't get enough sleep. Fall asleep in the daytime. 50% of car accidents are caused by falling asleep at the wheel. Only 20% are caused by drinking and drugging. Wow, that's a lot of not sleeping. So where do you go when you go to sleep? Those questions will be answered over the next 10 episodes. Where you move 
and where you feel. Do you move outdoors? Do you go to a gym? Do you go to a yoga studio? Do you go to one of those bicycle places? Where do you move? Do you jog in place? Do you get a little cardboard box with stones, put burlap bag on it, and just run in place? Where do you move? Do you go to a park? Do you go to a bicycle track? Do you do a quarter mile track around high school? Where do you move? And where do you do you feel? Do you feel? Do you feel? Do you feel? Where do you feel? Do you feel here? Do you feel here? Do you feel here? So these are important questions that are part of the five transformations. So what you eat and think, how you breathe and drink, when you sex and sleep, where you move and feel is why you chi dance, drum, and heal. So those are the five transformations. Now, Stephen Covey wrote a book, Seven, Seven Habits, Habits of Highly Habits. Effective People. What's the first step? Start with the end in mind. <laughs> so what's the end of chi dance, drum, and heel? What's the end? Hip hop, tai chi. <laughs> Hip hop meets tai chi and yoga. <laughs> so we call it Thai yoga qigong. Tai chi yoga qigong. And it's a dance. Now, why dance? Because it feels good. Who doesn't like to dance? The people who say, oh, get me drunk first. I, I can dance if you get me drunk first. Or give me some drugs or something because I feel uncomfortable in my body. I feel uncomfortable moving. Okay. I can't help you with that. That's something that you should have overcome in elementary school, in preschool, pre-K. The more you dance, the more you feel comfortable. Your mother should have had you on the floor and turned you around and played your toes. And while I'm thinking of it, I've got to mention this. I had a 91-year-old patient come into my office in a wheelchair. And she said, my arms hurt. I cannot lift my arm. I can't pick my arm up. And so she was like this. So I said, grab on to my, use your hands, grab on to my arm. She said, I can't, I can't, I can't. So I scooped her up from behind and I lifted her out of the wheelchair and put her on the massage table. And she's like, that hurt, that hurt, that hurt. Blah, 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 blah. So I put her on the table and then I relaxed one leg and I put it down and I relaxed the other leg. And then I said, where does it hurt the most? And she said, from my hip to my knee. So I did this to her leg. And her daughter's like, are you hurting my mother? And I'm like, no, I'm freeing her of the pain of accumulation. So I continued to drum hip to her knee, then I did the other drum, I did the other hip to the knee, then I did the bottom of the feet up to the knee, and then I did from the knee down to the ankle, and I spent 20 minutes drumming her body. All of a sudden, she started smiling. All of a sudden, all her stiffness and pain went away. And then she said, can you do my back? And I'm certainly, can you roll over? She says, not without your help. So I got her to turn over and I drummed on her back. And I said, do you remember a dance called the bump? She said, I sure do. I said, well then wiggle from side to side. And while she was wiggling her 91, I'm patting her. When she got up, she grabbed one of my hands. She said, thank you so much. I haven't felt this good in 17 years. I said, what happened 15 years ago? My husband died. I'm like, oh my God, she's been holding on to grief for 17 years. And I was able, not one pin, not one herb, not one breathing exercise. All I did was body drumming. And she was amazed and her daughter was amazed. 
and her daughter called me the next day and made appointments for two other family members. So how you move, how you feel, body drumming, dance and heal, this is where you need to start. So Qigong is Asian medicine. Qigong therapy is Asian medicine. How you move energy through your body. What is energy? Oxygenated blood. Well, if I just sit still and breathe, I'm going to oxygenate my blood. Yeah, but if you do these movements, if you do these spiral movements, spinal twists, you will electromagnetically charge the blood so that it can be stored. And this is the issue for us, is where we store the energy, where we store oxygen. Now, up until January 2017, they believed that the lymphatic system stopped behind the ear. Sound check. Let me check. Okay. I just want to make sure so you don't see the blue light. Continue. Yeah, but I got a notification from one of our uh, listeners. So I'm okay. just double checking. Yeah, I just see that. I, it, this was disconnected. Okay. Uh-huh. So, how you drum, dance, and heal. This is how you move energy through the body. And so they believed that the lymphatic system ended at the ear. And then they discovered there were T lymphocytes in the brain. And they're like, how could that be? The lymph system doesn't go in the brain. How could lymphocytes be there? And then they had to do the investigation and find out that the lymph system, in fact, went all the way into the brain. So the question for me was, how can Qigong enhance that? Okay, so how can it enhance? Okay, so we're having a problem with, it does not affect, just pull it out. It does not affect uh, YouTube, YouTube or, Instagram. or Instagram. So we're just gonna leave it the way it is. We okay. want to know if they can hear now. Okay. I changed so it. you'll make a comment on Facebook. Perfect. It's perfect. Great. Okay. So the issue is that Qigong increases lymphatic flow to the brain, which turns on the immune system. So dancing and spiraling actually improves strengthens and boosts your immune system. Why dance? Why not drugs? Why not surgery? Why not injections? Why dance? So let me ask you a silly question. If you were God and you were gonna invent human beings, would you invent them so they would break down and need to see doctors, or would you invent them so they were self-repairing? And therein lies the rub. If you believe in God, then God would make it so that you could self-repair and not have to go see somebody who will tell you, oh, we just discovered the lymphatic system in the brain. Oh, we just discovered the interstitial of a new organ. Oh, we just discovered another new organ called the mesentery. Oh, yeah? You're just discovering stuff? Oh, we just discovered in February of this year that exercise secretes an enzyme called superoxide dismastase, which turns on the immune system in individual organs if you do regular exercise. There was a request for a small summary of what was missed. Well, I am so glad you asked me for that summary. You are gonna to have to go to 
21 days to wellness.com. You're going to have to subscribe to the podcast. And when you subscribe, you will be able to get the replay. If you don't subscribe, you are S O L. You won't be able to get the replay. Does that make sense? Yes, of course. So today is the overview of 10 episodes. The 10 episodes will be listed. The topic of each of these episodes will be listed on Monday. Today is Friday. So on Monday, we're going to list the 10 episodes and the dates of each episode and what's going to be covered. So you'll know in advance every Friday, 11 to 12, what the episode is going to cover. So overview. Start with the end in mind. So chi dance. So what is chi? It's the electromagnetic energy that's charged, that enables the blood to be stored. That is the whole hookup, is to be able to store the energy. Well, where do you store it, Dr. Love? I don't know anything. How do you store energy? Well, the lungs store the yang energy. The kidneys store the yin energy. The conception vessel stores the yin energy. The governing vessel stores the yang energy. And the wrists and ankles store the overflow. Okay, you lost me again, Dr. Love. What's yin and yang and what's energy? You got to take me through the whole thing. All right. So yin is gathering, nurturing energy. Yang is active, aggressive energy. So you see a woman pushing a baby coach. You look up and you see a truck coming down. The woman is paying attention to the baby. She doesn't see the truck. You have to calculate, oh, truck before it hits woman and baby. Me, can I get there and push them out of the way? And then your brain says, yes, I can do that. And then you have to run across the street, push the woman and the baby out of the way, and yourself so you don't get hit by the truck. That's yang energy that's stored. Now, the average person is like, oh no, look at that. That truck's gonna hit that woman and that baby. Let me get my phone out and record it instead of going to save them. That's not funny, stop laughing. So the yin energy would be stored in the kidney region. And the yin energy would be, I have to comfort them. Even though I'm late for an appointment and this woman almost died with her baby, I'm going to go comfort her and stay with her until help can come. And that's compassionate healing energy, which is mystically stored in the kidneys. Now, we have another reservoir, which we call the reception vessel, because you receive feelings. You receive thoughts, you receive words, and then you express. So the reception vessel stores yin energy. The governing vessel, which is the spinal cord, the spinal column, the dural tube, and the cerebrospinal fluid, all that is the governing vessel. And what triggers the governing vessel is the hypothalamus, which is a structure in your brain that translates thought into action. What comes first? The thought of the action. Clearly, the thought comes first. Oh, I wasn't thinking. I just did it. No, you were thinking. You might have not been thinking right now, but you were thinking previously. So, but we're going to cover all that. So, the thought always comes before the action. And that energy is stored in the governing vessel. And then the wrists and the ankles store the overflow. So in New York, I go to this restaurant, there's this huge door, and I'm like, mm, mm, mm. I'm like, I'm not struggling with this door. Centered myself, took a breath, grabbed the door, and whoosh. But normally, people are, mm, mm. and then there's a little tiny sign that says, Heavy door, please use both hands to pull open. Wow, New York City, 
kind of different. So if you see a box and you want to pick up the box, most people just whoop and they try to muscle it up with their arms, but you already know that you should bend your knees and squat and not lift it with your back, but lift it with your legs. That's yang energy. And that comes from the wrists and the ankles. Okay. So that's how you move. That's how you dance. And that's how you heal. So we start with the end in mind is that dancing and drumming, body drumming is healing. Dancing and drumming is healing. I'm going to say it again. Dancing and drumming is healing. So we've got hip hop music. We've got Tai Chi. And then why and how does that turn into healing? Okay, so you have a spleen. What the hell is the spleen? What does the spleen do? The spleen controls the lymphatic system. The spleen secretes digestive enzyme. The spleen controls the immune system by making white blood cells and triggering them in the bone marrow up to the thymus gland for weapons and armor to then go into the lymphatic system. Spleen is pretty important from Chinese medicine perspective. Okay, what does the kidneys do? The kidney filters all the fluids. 1% of all the fluids goes into the urine, 1%. The other 99% goes back into the blood. So once it's been filtered, it goes back into the blood. Well, silly question, do I need two kidneys? Well, let's ask God. God says you only need one kidney. And as a matter of fact, you can pretty much live okay with a half of one kidney. So two kidneys is redundant. You've got two lungs. Could you live with one lung? What if you had a collapsed lung? Suppose somebody stabbed you in the back like your best friend. What if you got run over by a truck and crushed your ribs and collapsed your lung? What if you took an overdose of some stupid drug and then started smoking and collapsed a lung? Okay. Could you live with the other lung? Yeah, you could. So Two lungs is redundant. Two kidneys is redundant. But the fact of the matter is, you could live with half of your liver. And you could completely cut out the spleen. You don't need a spleen to live. And yet, the spleen is so very important. So how does that work, Dr. Lev? If I, if I can live without a spleen, I can live with half a liver, and I only need a quarter of a kidney, uh, how does that work? All of those functions get distributed to other organs. Wow. God made us so that we were self-repairing. If you lose a kidney, if you lose a lung, if you lose half of your liver, if you lose your spleen, you'll still be alive because there's redundancy built in. That is the fail-safe mechanism. That's the self-repair mechanism. So why wouldn't Western medicine teach us how to make all of our organs stronger? Because they don't make any money doing that. They're dependent upon your stupidity to, to malfunction. They're dependent upon your lack of intellectual curiosity. They're dependent upon your not wanting to read. They're dependent upon your laziness. And that's how they make money. When you're not intellectually curious, when you're lazy, when you don't like to read, and you don't want to exercise, and you don't want to eat right. Wow. So I'm not blaming doctors. I'm not blaming big pharma. I'm not blaming hospitals. I'm putting the responsibility on you. Don't abdicate your responsibility and say, oh, insurance company, pay for me to get well. Oh, government, pay for me to get well. 
Stop expecting the government to take care of you when you get sick, when the answers for you not getting sick, preventive medicine has existed for 3,000 years. And that's what I've been teaching for 36 years. So I saw a cartoon and it said, psychic reader. There was a huge line for psychic reader. And there was another guy saying, health advice, cobwebs. <laughs> Nobody wanted the health advice because nobody wanted to do what it took to stay healthy. And that's the only reason why I'm in business. That's the only reason why I'm alive is to help you. So what does Chi Dance do for your spleen, your kidneys, and your liver? Oh, did I tell you? I didn't even get to the function of the liver. I'm sorry. The liver filters dead, red, and white blood cells. The liver filters bacteria, virus, fungus, and parasites. The liver stores blood. The liver regulates your metabolism. The liver decides where fat is stored. The liver then burns stored fat for fuel while you are fasting. So you can go 40 days without food. Your liver figures out how to keep you alive. You can go 14 days without water. Your kidneys and your liver figure out how to keep you alive without water. Okay. Assassin X Legacy is a testimony that says that, thank you, Dr. Love, the neck cupping, slapping, drumming has helped my neck a ton, and I appreciate it. Wow. Thank you so much. And he's asking a question as well. Okay. Ask your question. My left side under the rib cage spasms a lot and sometimes it hurts. It feels like a clog. I don't know if it's my lung or spleen happens right under the left bottom of my rib cage. It is your spleen. And you're not exercising enough and you're eating too much late at night. So you have to cut out fatty foods, you have to cut out sugary foods, you have to cut out carbohydrates, you have to eat more leafy greens. What time is the last meal? And you've got to exercise three times a day for 15 minutes. Your last meal should be five hours before you go to sleep. You should drink 30 ounces of water the first hour and 16 ounces of water every hour for five hours and then no more water. If you want to drink juice or tea, that's fine. But that's all you need. Okay? So, what does Chi Dance do for the blood pressure, the blood sugar, blood flow? What does it do for the muscles and tendons? What does it do for reverse aging? What does it do for balancing your emotions? What does it do for sexual stamina? I have a hundred women married who complain that their husbands either can't last more than 10 minutes or can't get it up or are completely disinterested in sex and yet they catch them looking at their phone at naked pictures. So something's wrong. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. <laughs> so you got to figure that out. But the Chi Dance will reverse all of those problems. The Chi Dance will increase your sex drive, will increase your sexual stamina, will reverse muscle and tendon shortening and weakening. Are you still you have open? a question? Are you still open, Dr. Love, for telemedicine? I am still open for telemedicine. Uh, you can go to Dr. Chi Love and make an appointment, uh, online appointment, and we will get you in uh, with a questionnaire and we'll be able to help you. So, muscles and 
tendons, muscles and tendons move joints. had a guy who couldn't lift his arm up. He was at a lecture at a library. I stuck one needle in his shoulder and literally within minutes he could lift his arm up. He became a really, really good patient and sent me over a dozen referrals. One guy. So musculoskeletal, neuroendocrinology, circulatory, digestive, reproductive, Respiratory, wow, we've got everything covered for self-repair. And if there's a dysfunction, a malfunction, a restriction, then we've got acupuncture, we've got acupressure, we've got body drumming, we've got meridian brushing. We've got so many different ways of helping you without drugs, without surgery, Wow, doctor, your ills without pills. Mm. Okay, so qigong therapy is Asian medicine. I have the self repair manual. I've got it. Now you have seen people play Tibetan bowls. You have seen people do sound therapy. So this was made specially for me. You can see the yin yang. This was made in Mississippi, right here in the US of A, that was made especially for me. Okay, so this is sound therapy. But what's even more important than sound therapy is you making the. We're going to cover that in another episode. So you've now received the overview of the five transformations and you've received the last, start with the end in mind, chi, dance, drum, heals. Chi, dance, drum, for healing. Chi, dance, drum, heals. So, do we have any questions? Just it's twelve o'clock time check, so you know what time it is. Okay. Um, let me see. I have another question. Okay. This is Assassin X Legacy from YouTube. I have. Why do I get a crackling cough after I eat? Maybe he shouldn't be having cold drinks. Ask him, please. Why do I get a crackling cough after I eat? Mucus. Okay, so here is a design flaw. Your throat goes to your lungs and your stomach. The lungs do not like cold. If you drink something cold or eat something cold, you start to cough. <coughs> and that's an effort to clear the passageway. He's getting mucus too. And I used to swallow water into my lungs. Now, if you gave me hard liquor or a soda, it would go straight in the stomach. But if it was water, somehow my epiglottis couldn't make the switch and the water would go into my lungs and I'd cough. So coughing is a way of clearing the irritation of the esophagus. Now, how do you get mucus in your lungs, foods, then you get congestion and mucus in your lungs. So what are the mucus forming foods, Dr. Love? Dairy, milk, butter, cheese, ice cream, yogurt, mayonnaise, mayonnaise, mayonnaise made from eggs, sugar, flour, salt, fried foods, heated oils, anything in that 
realm will create mucus congestion. Those are mucus forming foods. So how can we get rid of the mucus is going to be your next question. Well, there's the five white saviors, onions, garlic, scallions, leeks, and shallots. Those are five pungent vegetables that will cut mucus. So what's the dosage? How do I take it? Well, a small onion every day. And, or you can take the Cooking Raw with Dr. Love webinar every Wednesday. So you can sign up for that and you can find out more. That would help with a shift. So we have a digestive system and then we have the foods that we choose to eat. And so the foods that we eat affect the digestive system, the amount, the time of day, how well you chew your food. And you should chew 30 times each mouthful. Tell them again. Tell them. How many times? 32. Say it again. <laughs> Out loud so we can all hear you. Chew a lot. 32 times, 32 before, times. You, before you swallow. And why is that? Because you have 32 teeth and each tooth is connected to an acupuncture meridian. 21 days sight. Repeat, please. You say it. 21 days to wellness.com. The numerals 21 days is plural. 21 days to wellness.com. That's okay. how you subscribe to this webcast. Okay. I have an Instagram question. Um, I have weak wrists and often near my thumb gets swollen. That's you think question. it's overuse and do you recommend and what do you recommend I can do? I recommend that you call and make an appointment for telemedicine because without seeing your wrist, I can't make any guesses. So you'd have to call me and make an appointment because you would have already started doing finger exercises. If you were intellectually curious, you would have already started doing that. Can she do this? I don't know. Yeah, I know. I don't know. That's why you got to call me. Stand up straight. Stop slouching. Stop leaning. I'm talking to you at home. I, I see you doing this. Sit up straight. What can I do about endonitis? Metriosis? No. Endonitis in my Okay, I have no idea what that is because you didn't spell it right. Tendinitis? I think it's tendinitis. Tendinitis. Or it could be... Kicks coming back. Okay, again, you're going to have to, you're gonna have to tell, uh, call me and make an appointment because... Yeah, it happens when they exercise and do Qigong, yeah. Yeah, they have to call in. Yeah. Um, Sugar P from YouTube, index finger on the left hand stuck, stiff, in bent position. What do I do to release it? Okay. How old are you? What kind of work do you do? How much water do you drink? What kind of finger exercises do you do? All those are questions I need to have the answer right. to in order to advise you. Um, this is a common problem, having fingers stuck, okay? And typically, if it just happened like in the last three months, I can fix it just with my hands. If it's more than three months, I'm gonna need acupuncture. If I can't get to you, then I'm gonna show you where to put magnets and you can take magnets on at night. So there's a lot of things that can be done for, it's called trigger finger and it gets stuck in one position. 
and it's a tendon, and the tendon is connected to the neck. So I would have to release the neck in order to release the tendon. So it's it's not complicated, but it's involved. So there's no easy fix for that. So, so far, all of the questions that were asked need telemedicine due to the condition. The, the, the nature of the Yeah, the condition. nature. And that's also the tendonitis of the foot of the foot yeah and the jam finger yeah the mucus is most likely a, a, a shift in the diet for the about amount of the what you're eating the amount of food and the time of day if you shift that then you should be able to and i know people don't like to give up the food they like but a suggestion for the time period you don't like to give up the food you like i gave it up <laughs> And you gave it up. Yes. And what was the result of you giving up the food? I feel amazing. I would recommend at least 15 to 20 days before not trying it. Try it for 15, 21 days. Do the 21-day program. Give up that food for another 15 days after that. And then try to reintroduce the food and see what happens. Okay. I'm very happy with the questions. Oh, me too. I'm really happy with the questions. All right. So you can you um, provide people with the information regarding the 7.30 a.m. Qigong class, which is going to go up in price? Oh, yes. So if you want to join the ongoing Online, boost your immune system Qigong class is Monday through Friday from 7.30 to 8.30. Right now, it's $29.99. Right now. Wednesday is going to go up to $49.99. So get in while you can fit in. It's amazing. So today is Friday. So you have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So you have five days to get in for $29.99. And if you go to lovechigong.com right now, I will knock $5 off the price. you got to do it right now. If you're listening to this podcast, if you go right now to lovechigong.com and sign up, Instead of $29.99, it will be $24.99 if you're listening to this podcast. Monday and Tuesday is going to be back to $29.99, and then Wednesday it goes to $49.99. So it's totally up to you. LoveQigong.com, and if you want to uh, sign up, subscribe to this podcast, which is still free. This podcast is still free. You have to go to 21daystowellness.com. That's the numerals 21. Days is plural. Okay. Lovechikong.com. Katniss, you got a question. I just want to put a disclaimer out there. The class is from 7.30 to 8.30. But once you're in as a group member, you play it if you get up later or if you have earlier commitments that's not a disclaimer that is a benefit for joining is that you can watch it later and you can archive all the shows for the last three months that's a benefit from being a member is you get to archive the show you can watch it later do now it later. i went to home shopping club this was 2001 home shopping with my Qigong pro program. And the guy said, let me take a little drive. Because he picked me up. I, I took the train because Home Shopping Club is in Tampa. So I took the train from Fort Lauderdale to Tampa. The guy picked me up. And he said, I got your email. I'm really interested. I'm glad you came to meet me. But before we go to the office, I'm going to take you to the warehouse. And I'm going to show you 10,000 exercise videos that did not sell. And we were really impressed, but I want you to see it. 
in person. <laughs> There's a huge warehouse and all these exercise videos did not sell. And this man, well-intentioned, crushed my little dream. That was 2001. So guess what I did? I said, thank you, but no thank you. He wanted to give me 5%. 5%, not 10%, not half, not a quarter, 5%. He said, we'll shoot your Qigong videos for you and we'll give you 5% and we'll make 95%. And I was like, maybe I'm delusional, but I don't think so. So I am much happier. 2001, we're back to 2020. I am way happier with myself and with the product that I delivered to you. So... Thai Yoga Qigong is 18 exercises that I teach online in a particular sequence. And once you've mastered that sequence, then I teach you Qi Fit, which are exercises with weighted balls and bars and batons. And that builds up your physique. And then after you've mastered those 37 exercises, then we go on to reverse aging specialist and I teach you how to reverse age. Now I'm the poster boy for reverse aging. I am 99 and a half years old. Slight exaggeration. So the issue is if you do these things, you will look better, feel better, move better, dance better, and become more attractive to everyone, not just the opposite sex. Dogs and babies will love you too, yes. and kitty cats as well. So <laughs> that's all I can tell you. So next Friday, episode two, Dr. Love dials you in on body drumming, meridian brushing, and chi emission. So I want you to remember, your health is in your hands. Prevention is the only cure. If you want to be well, you've got to chi gong well. I'm Dr. George Xavier Love for Dr. Love Dials You In.